You can't fool me. I know that this is like the fifth or maybe sixth video you're watching on the Leica M6. And I know that you know all the specs about the different models by now. So let's just cut the clinical and mathematical talk about specs and jump right into what really matters. So this video will be separated into two parts. Part one, which is this video here, will be about the reasons why I got my Leica M6 in the first place. And video number two, which you can watch here once I uploaded it, will be about the personal connection and how I got my Leica M6 in particular. Because you know that I love personal stories about how cameras find their way into one's collection. So just as a little background information, I got this camera in November last year and today it's May of 2020, so it has been in my possession for around six months. I shot quite a lot with it since then, I think around 30 to 40 rolls, which in my opinion is still not enough to do a proper long-term review. So this is not what we will be doing today, but I will give you my reasons that brought me to buying this camera in the first place place. And of course we will sprinkle it up with some sample images that I took with this camera. So let's start at the beginning. Because the overall reason to why I got interested in a rangefinder or in a Leica camera was that I saw myself developing more and more into street photography. And for street photography there are different things you would like to have in a camera than for other genres of photography. And with street photography in particular, I think one thing is key. And this is being fast and knowing your camera by heart on the street. And with my SLR cameras, as for example my Canon A1, even though I used this for plenty, plenty of rolls and I feel like I got used to it and all the functions by heart, one thing I feel like the learning curve after some time just got a straight line and didn't get up even more. And this is focusing. When you have an SLR camera, your focus from close to infinity is super long, as you can see here. And it takes forever to focus from one end to the other. Also, you do not have a focusing tab. So I felt like every time I picked up my camera and I didn't take a look at the scale where my focus lays and I brought it to my eye, it was a bit of trial and error where to focus. And it took forever, you know, to, to set my focus. The thinking I had behind this that I, is that I could not really build up muscle memory. I had the muscle memory for winding, for taking a shot, for the aperture, for the shutter speed, for everything, but not for focusing, which is the most crucial part on the streets. So when I got into reading about rangefinder cameras, I realized that this is different for rangefinder cameras. If we take a look at my M6 here, you can see that the path in focusing from here to here is super, super short. This is close focus, this is infinity, and it's just one tiny movement. Also, we have this focusing tab right here. And this helped me when picking up my camera and just feeling the focusing tab, I knew exactly where my focus is. Oh, this is 0.7 meters, this is 2 meters, this is infinity. And building up this muscle memory is very, very crucial. Even though I have only been using this camera for half a year, now I feel like I can operate it with my eyes closed. Sometimes I shoot it from the hip and I don't even have to look through the viewfinder just because I know exactly where my focus lays. And this muscle memory was the key reason why I wanted to get into a camera which can offer this. And reason number two why I got the Leica M6. I wanted to have a camera which has 35mm frame lines because this is my favorite focal length for street photography, but still lets me see some space around these frame lines. With my SLR camera I could only see what is in my frame and I could not see outside of the frame. But I think I kind of messed up a lot of shots with my SLR on the streets because I simply didn't see that something is moving into or out of my frame. So with the Leica cameras you can have different magnifications in the viewfinder and I do have the standard 
0.72 magnification, which lets me see the 35 mm frame lines, but also some space around it. When you wear glasses, it might be a little bit more tight than if you do not wear glasses. And I think 28 mm would be a deal breaker because this would not be possible with glasses. But with the 35, I feel comfortable and I do see enough to anticipate how my frame will look like. And reason number three for deciding for the Leica M6 was that I wanted to have an all-mechanical rangefinder camera. Many rangefinder cameras is for example the Contax G series or the bit cheaper Canonet QL cameras for example are not fully mechanical but they rely on batteries to function and this is something I did not want to rely on. This might not be a big deal for everybody but for me it was because of two thoughts. Number one was if I ran out of batteries and I am somewhere where it's not easy to buy batteries because it's a Sunday for example, I did not want to stop shooting. But I wanted to have the assurance that I could shoot 100% of the time when I wanted to shoot and not be dependent on some sort of power. And my second thought was that not mechanical cameras but electronic cameras tend to break a bit faster and are not that easy to repair. So I knew that this would be an investment and once I do this investment I knew that I wanted to have something that might not die on me as fast and with mechanical cameras of course you have to send them in and get them cleaned every now and then but I think this is a better price to pay than maybe having a very very expensive paperweight after some time. And the M6 does take batteries, but these batteries are only for the light meter, not for the usage of the camera itself. And the light meter was also another reason why I decided to pick up the M6 and not another M body as for example the M2. Everything else that wouldn't have a light meter would feel like a compromise for me and I would be scared that after some time, be it half a year or a year, I would not be happy anymore and sell it again to buy something with a light meter. Another point I had on my list to get into a rangefinder system but didn't really know how crucial it was until I really got to test it is the noise of the shutter. If I take an SLR camera you can hear that the shutter is relatively loud. This Canon A1 has a cough so if I take another SLR camera as my Nikon F3 Yes, you can hear that the shutter is relatively clunky and very loud. As a comparison, I can show you the shutter sound of my M6. And it's almost unnoticeable. So I had the issue that people would notice me after I took a shot of them on an SLR. And even though it's not that big of a deal, it feels nice to be invisible and with the M6 I do feel invisible and even though the shutter on the M6 is very silent I do enjoy the smooth crank and the very mechanical and organic shutter sound on this. So after evaluating which reasons are important for me and which must have things my future camera should have I saw that there would not be so many cameras left. So that would be the M6, but also, for example, its competitor, the M5. And this might sound like a superficial reason, but I don't think it is necessarily. Because when I looked at both cameras, I just knew that the M6 for me is way more aesthetic than the M5. And what does this have to do with shooting? If I pick up a camera and I just love every single part of it, from the mechanicals to how it feels like to how it looks like, I think the chances of picking it up are way higher than if I have a camera that I do maybe enjoy shooting but do not enjoy looking at. Also, the M6 does have some iconic character to it. Some very iconic street photographers were using the M6 on the streets and the iconic feeling of the M6 also gave me like one last push to decide for this camera over the M5 or over any of the other M models. And the last reason why I decided to finally get the M6 is, believe it or not, the price. The price of M6 bodies are high and they were high a couple of years ago. They were already high when it was first released. They were never low. This was never a cheap camera. 
and assumingly this never will be. I did not buy this as an investment in planning to selling it anytime later, but I had in mind that this would probably keep its worth over time. But just along the thought of buying something that is very expensive but you could sell any time like this if there was an emergency and you really needed that money back kind of gave me a little bit of ease to do this investment. In the end this feels a bit like renting a camera because I bought this for some money I would probably get back maybe a little less maybe a little more but approximately the same so this does a lot with the bad conscience of spending hundreds and hundreds of euros on a camera. Even though you might get the money that you paid for it back once you sell it, it is still a big investment in the first place and it was for me as well. So back when I bought my Leica M6, I was still a student so this was not an easy decision. But taking a look back at the story how I got this titanium version Leica M6 is, is a bit crazy to be honest. But I think there were a lot of coincidences that kind of made it impossible to not buy this camera. And in a way I also think that it was meant to be that this camera is in my hands now. So if you want to know the whole story, you should stay tuned and see you next time. Oh snap, did I still have film in this? For the Leica snobs out here, I don't have a Leica lens on here. This is the Folklander Colorscopa 35 2.8. So when I stumbled upon this body and I had enough money to buy this body, I knew that I could not afford a Leica lens straight away. I mean, this is my long-term plan, but for now I'm very happy with this lens. But I had a story the other day because I walked into a shop, an analog photography shop, and then there was one of the people working there who came up to me so he asked me about my Leica and we were talking and after some time he was like oh I can't look at it you don't have Leica glass on there oh sorry but you know this is a sin and I was like seriously I mean let people live if people can only afford one thing at a time that's all right and you don't have to have Leica glass on there to be cool you know I mean of course the the lens is more important for image quality than the body but if you ask me if I could only afford one thing at a time I would rather have an expensive body with a cheap lens I can use than an expensive lens with no body that I cannot use because I mean there is no cheap Leica M body but whatever bye Thank you.